Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the Dip channel. We finally have a new build for any Insider channel, and this is a big one if you ask me. We have a lot of new things, a lot of new features, so stay tuned for everything that is new in this latest build for the Dev channel, and we're going to talk about everything in this video. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below, and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. Before starting the video, I want to introduce you to private internet access. Using the internet without private internet access is like leaving your phone unsupervised in public places. All it takes is one quick thief to grab it. A virtual private network or VPN for shorts hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. Private internet access is the world's most transparent VPN provider with over 30 million downloads and their no logs policy has been proven multiple times in court. Streaming services such as Netflix have different library options based on where you are located. Using private internet access, you will be able to watch those shows or movies that are not available in your current location. With private internet access, you can also unblock restricted content such as news websites for Canadians, which have been blocked in the past month. And you can use one private internet access subscription to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. Make sure to check out private internet access in the links from the description below for a great deal. 83% discount and 4 months free. First of all, the build that we're talking about in this video is the build 26 120.1843 version 24H2 or Windows 11 of course and as I've said we have a lot of new features and improvements in this build but first of all we need to talk about something new that Microsoft is introducing starting with Windows 11 24H2 and that is checkpoint cumulative updates. What is that exactly? Basically with Windows 11 version 24H2 Microsoft is introducing this new concept of checkpoint cumulative updates. This will allow you to get features and security enhancements via the latest cumulative update through smaller incremental differentials containing only the changes since the previous checkpoint cumulative update. This means that it can save time, bandwidth, and hard drive space. I think this is pretty interesting. You're going to have an article from the official Microsoft website that explains checkpoint cumulative updates in depth, so you can check that out if you want. Now let's move on to the new features and changes inside this build. First of all, related to the file explorer, we now have shared content in the file explorer with also an updated UI for this section as you can see. So we have the recent files which contains the names, date accessed, and file location. We have favorites. Basically, you can add files and add them to favorites to access them directly from here. And also, we have the shared section. The shared section will basically contain files that were shared to your Outlook account that you are also logged in into your Windows operating system. So for example, I have here files, I have the name, date shared, and also file location. I think this can be pretty useful because, of course, some people use Outlook and have have an Outlook email and receiving the files directly here and accessing them directly here I think is a good addition for Microsoft. In this build, Microsoft is also introducing the Windows Sandbox as a standalone app that can be updated through the Microsoft Store. So of course, you're going to have to turn it on. First of all, if you don't have it turned on, you have to go to turn Windows features on or off and from here, select Windows Sandbox and then click on OK. Now Windows features will start searching for the required files and also apply the changes. We're also going to need to reboot the PC for the changes to work so I'm going to do that right now. After the restart if you're searching for sandbox or Windows sandbox in the search box you're going to see that Windows sandbox is available as a standalone app and in my opinion it is pretty much faster and improved and then you can also open up the Microsoft store and you'll see that the Windows sandbox app will be updated and installed through Microsoft store. So I'm just going to go to update and downloads and then click on get updates to get all the latest updates for my apps. In this build we also have a notice from Microsoft related to new PCs or new user accounts on managed commercial devices and they will have the Microsoft 365 app pinned on the taskbar for quick access to Copilot for Microsoft 365. Microsoft also updated the lock screen so that the media controls will now show at the lower bottom center of the lock screen when media is being played. Related to the start menu, Microsoft is adding some new options when right clicking on an app. You'll have a new jump list that will be shown for apps that have them such as PowerPoint or in this example Microsoft Edge. Microsoft also made some changes related to the account manager and they've moved the sign out button here so you can very easily sign out if you're interested and also if you have multiple accounts on your Windows machine you can have an additional button that will let you switch between those accounts really easily. Microsoft is adding the new options for the shortened time and date and also the ability to disable the notifications icon in the taskbar on the dev channel so if you right click on the taskbar then go to taskbar settings you're going to notice that you have related settings for date and time you have the show time and date 
in the system tray and the option show abbreviated time and date. And if you go to the other option notifications and expand notifications, you're going to notice that you can disable the notification bell icon or enable it if you want. Related to the Windows search, if you search for a file, for example, I'm going to search for an image and we have, for example, a wallpaper. If you go and click on this button, you're going to see that we now have the option to share this file directly from Windows search. Related to input, if we open up the settings app inside Bluetooth and devices and then touch, of course, if your monitor has touchscreen, Microsoft updated this page to have a new section for touchscreen edge gestures. You can choose if you would like to disable the left or right screen edge touch gesture. There is also now an option to turn off suggestions to disable notifications from certain apps. You can do that directly from that certain notification or you can open the settings app, go to system and then notifications and you're going to have your notification suggestions. Microsoft is also adding the ability to detach a VHD if you have one created inside system storage and then disks and volumes when you select properties for your VHD. So we're going to have the option here and also in Windows update and then advanced options and then delivery optimization, Microsoft updated the design to better match the Windows 11 design principles. Also in settings and then network and internet, if you go to Wi-Fi and then select your Wi-Fi connection and then show the Wi-Fi network password, we're going to notice that we have this new UI for this new section and I think that is looking pretty good. Also another page that was moved from the old control panel is the fonts page. So for example, if you search for fonts inside search and then press enter, you will now be redirected to the new section inside personalization and then fonts in the settings app. And in this build, we're also getting a snipping tool app update. So to get that, of course, open up the Microsoft store and then go to downloads and then click on get updates. And this new update basically allows you to change the default save location for screenshots. So if you open the snipping tool and then click on these three dots and then settings, we're going to notice that you have automatically saved original screenshots. I have it turned on. Screenshots are saved too. And you have this new button to change that location. So as you can see, they are changed to screenshot, but I'm going to change it to pictures and then click on select folder as easy as that i think this is a pretty nice change let's now talk about a few fixes in this build for example related to the file explorer microsoft fixed an issue where when pressing win plus c a screen reader might unexpectedly say a pane had focus or focus may not be set within file explorer at all fix an issue which was causing control plus f to sometimes not start a search in file explorer fix an issue where keyboard focus might get lost sometimes when doing shift plus tab in file explorer fix an issue causing screen readers to not announce when you were an opening or navigating items in the breadcrumb clouds of the open or save dialog, fix an issue causing screen readers to not announce anything when opening or navigating items in the column header flyout in the file explorer. Related to input, Microsoft updated the logic for setting press the lower right corner of the touchpad to right click settings and then Bluetooth the devices and then touchpad so it wouldn't show in cases where touchpad doesn't support the functionality. Also fix an issue causing text suggestions for the hardware keyboard to not work properly. Related to the task manager, Microsoft fix an issue where the background wasn't displayed correctly in task manager settings. And they also fixed the graphs in the performance page of the task manager. Microsoft is also confirming that the recall feature is no longer showing as an option under the turn windows features on or off dialog in the control panel in windows. I'm not sure if that's good news. They also fixed an underlying issue believed to be the cause of insiders on the previous flight finding windows modules installer unexpectedly using 100% of the CPU causing freezes and other issues on PC. Fixed an issue causing causing some insiders to fail the latest updates, seeing the error code 0x800f0993. Related to widgets, Microsoft fixed an issue which could result in the widgets icon unexpectedly displaying in the taskbar twice sometimes. We also have some additional fixes that you can check out in the article below or on the official Microsoft blog post if you're interested. We also have some new known issues, for example, this build may fail to install with error 0x800f0983. If you see this error, you can try to install it again as it should work on retry, and if it stays on 0% be patient because it should proceed. Also in the settings app and then the reset your PC function and then the cloud download option won't work on this build. It will get stuck on getting things ready. Please choose the non-cloud option if you need to reset while Microsoft works on a fix. And also inside the start menu, if you click or tap on a letter on start menus all apps list, the all apps list may break. So if we tap on it, as you can see, it broke. If you encounter this issue, just reboot or restart explorer.exe to fix it. So this is pretty much the build for today as I've said, quite a few things that were interesting. And of course, if you want to check out the in-depth list of all the fixes and known issues, you can check out the article below in the video's description. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. How's your man from TechBase? Until next time, have a nice day.